Welcome back everybody to the San Dimas Wine Shop and Tasting Room video. We have got another great one for you this week. In fact, we're going to be featuring Stephen Ross wines, which have always been super popular here at the shop. Uh, we will have Stephen Ross Dooley here today, Tuesday, and we'll talk about the, about the tasting for the week. But Stephen Ross will be here today and we'll talk about a little bit about the different uh, tapas as we go through the tasting. And then um, I just want to tell you a little bit about what he does. And he started making wine as a teenager in his basement in Minnesota. He started making rhubarb and apple wine. Uh, got the bug, decided he wanted to go on to UC Davis, uh, went and got his degree, uh, spent 10 years in Napa making wine, seven years in Edna Valley making wine, and then in the late 90s, he started the Stephen Ross label. Uh, uh, then his second label came out in 2003 called Flying Cloud. And the rest is history. We have been purchasing Stephen Ross wines almost since day one here at the shop, and we absolutely love what they do. So stay tuned, and we're going to review some great wines. And first up is the Stephen Ross Pinot Gris. This is the 2013 effort out of Santa Maria Valley. This is a, done a, on 100% stainless steel. Got these beautiful aromas of fig, cinnamon, citrus. Got some good, bright acidity. When I tasted this wine this morning, I really noticed it's, it's more of a full-bodied Pinot Gris. And when I say full-bodied, I don't want to say that. I want to say that it's more like medium, medium minus, but it definitely is bigger than most Pinot Gris, especially the Italian uh, Pinot Gris that we drink here at the shop. Uh, but we are going to be doing this tonight with roasted zucchini rolls, um, and uh, we're probably going to sprinkle some almonds over the top of it just to bring up some of the flavors of the wine once I realized how big this wine was. Um, I should mention that Stephen Ross, for the most part, they make their wines all out of Edna Valley, which Edna Valley, if you don't know, is in San Luis Obispo County. It's just northwest of Arroyo Grande, north, even more north of Santa Maria Valley, for those of you that, uh, that kind of got that geography of the Central Coast straight. Um, but he makes some great wines, and the next wine we're going to be doing is the Chardonnay. And next up is the 2013 Chardonnay that comes out of uh, Edna Valley. Once again, talk about a big, big, bold wine. 100% barrel fermented and 100% malolactic fermentation, all done in a barrel. Nine months on oak, of which is French oak. And think of like big aromas of like nutmeg and apple pie. This is definitely a big, big Chardonnay. For those of you that like your Chardonnay's oaky and I don't want to say so much buttery, but definitely a good level of oak, uh, real Burgundian. Uh, you're really going to enjoy this wine. We're going to be doing this tonight uh, with a Cristini that's got some smoked salmon. And then we're also going to be doing a little uh, strawberry infused uh, cream cheese with some burnt butter. All right, and next up we have got two Pinots. We've got the Edna Valley Pinot, and here we have got the specific Stone Corral. Now, they are both Stone Corral Vineyard Pinots, which Stone Corral is their estate, is their estate vineyard. Uh, the difference on this really is more vinification, and this one here is the best of the fruit. So the best five barrels that they took of the fruit uh, went into the, into the Stone Corral. Now I know I'm saying that they're both Stone Corral, they are, but they just took the best fruit and put it in this bottle, and then the rest of the fruit went into this, which they just called the Edna Valley. So this is 11 months on French oak, this is 13 months on French oak, this is very specific in that they used, Jason and John, I hope you're listening, they used, uh, they used the two-way um, clone as well as clone 777 are, is on this one specifically. All right, now they're both earthy. They've both got some, some good fruit to them. They've both got a little bit of spiciness. This one has got a little bit, um, I would say probably a little bit more of a barnyardy scent to it. And this one is very fruit driven, very elegant, very Burgundian. Very, both of them, very delicious wines, same plot of land, uh, but you'd be surprised at how different they taste. We're going to be pairing both of these with a wonton cup that's filled with a roasted beet, beet puree that's topped with a little bit of grated gruyere. And next up is the Stephen Ross 2013 Grenache that comes out of Jesperson Ranch in Edna Valley. This is all aged in neutral French barrels. Uh, it's got aromas of baked cherry pie and some lavender, kind of floral, but still kind of fruit punchy the way Grenache is supposed to be. Uh, we'll be doing this tonight. On Tuesday night, we'll be doing it with a garam masala uh, chicken. Uh, we're going to do these lettuce wraps. 
and then we're going to do a fig ju over the top of it that I think is really going to bring out some of the beautiful um, fruit aromas that come out of this wine. Now I have always been a big fan of the Dante Ducey Vineyard. Uh, there's a lot of wineries in Paso and even some in Napa that use some of this fruit. Um, this is the, the winery itself, or I should say the vineyard itself is in Paso Robles. It's, it's an 85 parcel piece of land that is known just for great, great Zinfandel. This spends 11 months on French oak of which 25% of it is new. Um, I should mention for those of you that have ever gone up in this, up in, up into this, if you're going up 101 and going through, through Templeton, there's a region there called the Templeton Gap which is where fog, it's a cooler area where fog is allowed to come in off the coast. And that is precisely where this vineyard is at. For those of you that have gone to Turley, Turley uses a lot of this fruit in their Dante, obviously in their Dante Duce, but they also use it in their blending of a lot of their other Zinfandels. What I've noticed about this, and, and um, I think what's distinct about Dante Duce is the pepperiness that comes out of their Zinfandels and there's also this old vine appeal that even on some of the younger fruit that's not 25 years old still has a lot of that great appeal to it. Um, I think it's a it's an amazing it's a, just an amazing uh, complex wine and a lot of wineries like I said use it. Um, I would say that this here is definitely reminiscent of some cherry, some tobacco, some like pipe tobacco that's got cherry in it. It's got some spice, some smokiness. Um, and we're going to be pairing this tonight with a Cajun spice beef slider that's topped with grilled onions and some melted Munster cheese on it. Um, so that's the lineup this week. I hope you like it. I hope to see you all tonight for the uh, pairing. All right, and now we have got some announcements to make May 3rd tonight, Tapas Tuesday, of course, that starts at 5 p.m. We'll have Stephen Ross Dooley here. All of you can try these great wines with the dishes that we've paired up for you. And then May 12th, we've got the Calcareous dinner starting at 6.30. It's $90 for non-members, I'm sorry, $90 for members and $100 for non-members. Um, we have got a total of three tray past hors d'oeuvres plus four courses. That's taking place on May 12th once again at the McCoy Equestrian Center in Chino Hills. And then on June 6th is when we start our wine classes for blind pairings. So I will show you all the basics of how to be able to taste a wine and know where it came from and hopefully where the bridal is. So thank you so much for everybody for tuning in and cheers.